Hi guys, it's time for another crayfish update from here on Paul Pang Farm in Thailand. If you're from Australia, and it's another flaming yabby update, mate. Right, a little bit about these crayfish then. First off, missus, how old are they? They two months and three months mixed together. <laughs> That's right, we ran out of tanks, so we took the gamble and mixed two lots together from two, two of our birthing tanks. Yeah. And how many are in here? 168 okay so some will have eaten each other um, but let's go and show you the tank uh, before we put these into their new home we've got three identical tanks set up like this and they measure three meters long by just over 1.3 meters wide we're just topping it back up and we went for a different style this time we've incorporated a, a, a Leonardo DiCaprio beach area for them so when we top it up we have this about two inches deep and we've just backfilled it with um, sand to stop the sand migrating in a large volume we've just wedged this blue pipe in here so it's tight fitting across the tank and uh, say so we're backfill it we did plant it with morning glory you can see there as the water levels dropped some of the hyacinth has taken root it was just a few other aquatic plants don't know the uh, the uh, English name for them out here, uh, we call it Gachad. Seen better days, so we've just launched it in here. This is where some of our big male crayfish are housed. So for our first attempt with this new setup, uh, very impressed. I would say we put about 300, 350 in there. It's hard to gauge really, because they're, they're microscopic, these new babies. Before stocking them in here, we leave them in the birthing tanks for a couple of weeks. They eat the algae that's formed in the bottom of the tanks there. Then we transfer them to here. There's a little bit of algae already in here. When we clean these tanks out, we never scrape them clean. We just sweep it out. So there's a good, there's like a biofilm on the bottom of all the algae and then it bursts back into life soon as we top it up. So when they're minute, they feed on that. Uh, and then they get into the aquatic roots of the hyacinth and the morning glory, that sort of thing. Then when they start to make headway in there, then we start adding the pellets. So you can use vegetable pellets that you can feed your tilapia, or you can use your higher protein content ones uh, for the, the commonly used for feeding catfish around here. Or you can go for the more expensive uh, shrimp pellet, which sinks, and that's a very high protein content. But because we don't um, have a great depth of water in these tanks, floating pellets are fine. When we drain these ponds down, we've just got a little swivel valve at the end here. So we take this off, put a big bucket underneath there. And as it drains out, well, this time I poured it on my turmeric. Right then, we're ready to move some more into the tank. This is how small they start off. Amazing how quickly they grow. It's about an inch per month, uh, depending on water quality and what you're feeding them. One of the recent changes we've done with our birthing tanks is incorporating at least one hyacinth plant in each tank. And the reason being, when the baby crayfish start to migrate away from the mum's abdomen, they crawl into the root systems and start nibbling away in there. So when we transfer the babies from these tanks into the grow out tanks, um, then we throw this in as well makes it a lot easier and I dare say it's less stress to the baby crayfish because they're all in the root system when you move them. Toon's got the world's strongest crayfish. Uh, she won't let go of her house. She's moving house. Look. It's like a gypsy, isn't it? Romanian gypsy crayfish. <laughs> right, so we've got some more ready there. So that's another tank. We're going to empty the same time. These are pickup only, we don't send these through the post. Um, 
What size for this, missus? Come, come and get by yourself, it's five bar each. Five bar each. Okay, next size, show them that. Battery's running out. This okay. side, be 15 bar each. Yeah, that's another uh, month older. That pen me. This side, 20 bar. Okay. Ah, ah, felt your pain. This 50 baht. 50 baht each. This side 50 baht. When we first started crayfish farming, we paid 100 baht for these. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got to come and get these yourself. Unless you're buying the, the big males for the table or breeding sets. Um, you've got the, it's farm gate pickup, but the big ones we do send through the post, not a problem. Yeah. Right, let's put them in their new home, misses, where they're That's gonna good. grow big. That's good. Let's go. Right, so these are gonna go in the outside pond for growing on, and then we want them, we just throw the trap in. Nice and slow, misses, for the camera. Ripper. Hang on, let me erect my thingy. That's it. Go for it. They're not go. <laughs> <laughs> My bye. You're not boiling them in the hot surface of the water, are you? If they all go orange, it means it's quite hot in there. No, they're not hot at all. When you're letting these go, always choose the shadiest part of the pond to let them go. One, they don't like direct sunlight and the water will be a little bit cooler. If your pond is totally exposed to to the sun all over it um, then just agitate the water mix it up a for a few minutes and uh, move some more from lower down up to, to cool the upper layers and then pop them in and uh, they'll be very happy if you're thinking about getting into growing crayfish and you haven't got an outside grow out pond don't worry you can just keep them in your tanks it's just that we're quite short of space we've got over 10 tanks now uh, but we really use our tanks for breeding them. We've got one holding tank for the males um, and then for growing our juveniles. So when they're very small, um, about that big, then we grow them onto the size there, empty the tank and then put a fresh lot of babies in there. So yeah, it's, it's up to you. There's so many different ways of growing crayfish, certainly these red claw crayfish or yabbies. Uh, it's really up to you and what setup you, you like. These particular tanks that we just showed you, they don't have any air stones running. We have another three tanks that do have air stones running all the time and they're, they're used for growing the juveniles. And then of course we've got our famous breeding tank behind me. Just running a simple air pump off there to several air stones in here. We turned it off for the, for the video, it's a little bit noisy. If you'd like any more information, check out the link to our website. We've got a dedicated couple of pages on there, purely on farming red claw crayfish. Uh, please bear in mind, guys, we don't export our crayfish outside of Thailand. We must get an email or message every, every week, at least one, asking for us, you know, if we supply a price to um, export to the Philippines, uh, the US, and so on. Yeah, at the moment, we just... Unless you're an expert in export in uh, live crustaceans, in which case please get in touch and uh, we'll partner up perhaps. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're just supplied in, in Thailand at the moment and uh, yeah, it's going all right. <laughs>